So my first episode of Defamed Stars is not going to be this creep. Reasons being twofold. One, he is so disgusting, having him on my screen at all makes me feel physically ill. And two, that is certainly a rabbit hole I am not prepared to focus so hard on right now. I thought about which of the defamed creeps I could focus on first, and I decided to go with this one. One of many people's childhood stars, Rolf Harris. Now I just want to take a second to say I'm really sorry about my voice. <laughs> I have literally had the flu since like New Year now. I've got my honey and lemon here next to me. So I'm really sorry about my voice, but I got the flu. And you can't catch it through my video, so you're good. <laughs> Thankfully, Rolf was mainly famous through the 60s, 70s and 80s, whereas I grew up in the 90s. I remember thinking, he is so cheesy and annoying, I never liked him really. And horrifically, he was also very good friends with the disgusting and disgraced Jimmy Savile, and would appear on multiple different shows alongside him, including children's TV shows. As Rolf did grow a lot of fame with his skits, performances and artwork, as he calls it. Through kids TV, where kids would see him sing, oh yeah, he sang too, mm. Jake the Peg was one popular song, where he would sing about a kid called Jake with an extra leg, that's weird enough, but he would also act as if he was Jake the Peg, on stage, with an extra leg. Like no one thought this dude was weird. Well, apparently, it was known how weird and creepy Jimmy was, yet he was still let around kids constantly, even disabled children who could not do anything to defend themselves. It's amazing what famous people can get away with, isn't it? This is a clip from an episode of a show that was called Jim'll Fix It, and was presented by Jimmy Savile, the top pedo. On this episode, Rolf was a guest. He did a painting with one young girl and sang with another. Now just watch the way these two creeps talk and touch these girls. I've added some words in case you don't catch what they say. Impossible. How on earth can we get hold of that Mr. Rolf Harris? He's always flying all over the world. As soon as he knew that we needed him for Jim will fix it, here he came. <laughs> Dr. Elucidate, no less. Dr. Elucidate? Yes. Where is linseed? Come here, linseed. Linseed oil, what linaseed. a good idea. Come here. Turn around, look at the ladies and gentlemen. Now, you see this young lady, sir? She okay. wishes that she could help you with one of your paintings. Good idea. Do you think I may leave her in your chart? Safely leave her in my capable hands here. Right, right. I'll just I'll roll my sleeves up in case I get I'll some Back in a on. minute, back in a minute. Off you go. A thousand thanks for coming and being with us. Would you like to push that badge right up her nose? Yeah, and yes, a picture right of me you like that. absolutely super, young Linny. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> She's anxious to rush away. She's, I've got fast hold of her here. Stay here and enjoy it, girl. Okay, first of all, what the hell was Rolf thinking with this line? Linaseed oil, what a good idea. Why is that a good idea? You creep. She's clearly very young and also clearly very uncomfortable throughout being on stage with the two kiddie fiddlers. Girls got good instincts. Then the way he says, safely leave her in my capable hands, whilst very excitingly rolling his sleeves up. None of this sits well with me at all and the girl can feel it. Then this line. You look absolutely super young, Linny. Now, I guess that could be seen as an innocent comment, but when you hear more about Rolf's crimes and his type, this scene really makes your skin crawl. Rolf just has to kiss both of these girls' hands. Rolf likes to do this. Again, it could have seemed innocent enough at the time, but it wasn't, I assure you. The young girl clearly doesn't like this, as you actually see her grimace straight after he kisses her hand. Like, what the fuck is this weirdo even touching me and kissing me for? She even moves closer to the freak, Jimmy, just to get away from Rolf. 
<laughs> that says a lot. And to finish, after Rolf says this line, she's anxious to get away, he then proceeds to tell the innocent little fan to stay there and enjoy it, girl. Dear God, he's awful. I guarantee this girl's thoughts on Rolf changed after this interaction with him on stage. The line, though, stay here and enjoy it, girl. Ugh, gross. And no, run, girl, run. Oh yeah, and of course, she is anxious to get away. She's on stage with two pedos, and I think she knows it too. Now this next clip is Rolf on stage with another young girl. This time, he is singing with her. Again, I've added some words so you can see what he is saying, but also, pay attention to what his body language is doing at the same time. Matching his creepy ass words with his actions makes this next clip so worrisome. Everybody wants to get back to Gotta go get a girl to get to Gotta go find a girl for me Gotta go and get a girl and give it one Man, he is awful. The words he sings and how he actually points at the young girl gives me the major heebie-jeebies. <laughs> and he means that, just his type. Although, I do believe young Linny, as he so lovely named her, was more his type. This girl doesn't seem creeped out by Rolf. She was genuinely enjoying being on stage with her idol, Rolf Harris. Oh bless her, she's so cute. Look at her, she's just literally so happy to be there and just to be singing with him. Oh, if only you knew. Did you notice how he just has to kiss both of these girls' hands? Like, why? It, it's just weird. And even though I don't watch much TV, I just can't imagine, like, grown-ass men kissing these little girls' hands. It really is very strange and unsettling to me. I can't imagine I'm the only one. Perhaps things were different back then. Well... They clearly were. Children were just handed to these men in large groups and they would take full advantage of these children if and when possible. And a hand kiss is a very good way for Rolf to use to get his sexual attraction fed as these girls were not asked if they could be touched or kissed first. These men were the ones in control. Exactly how they liked it. I mean, really, whatever gave any men the right to touch and kiss random children? What made them entitled to ever do this and act this way? Oh yeah, that's called fame. Also, I am aware and want to point out here myself that because these clips are so old, there would have never been an option at the time to pause or rewind the TV if you missed what they said or did. So that is another way so many people stayed under the radar, yet in the public eye. Like some of these clips you actually have to really listen to, you know, I've put the words there for a reason and genuinely if you didn't catch it at the time, a lot of their actions and words really did go amiss. There was no TikTok bollocks back then making literally any video go viral, the options to play back and stuff. That's why I find these clips so interesting, seeing how they interacted with these kids. They know they're on TV, they know they're being watched, but they also know there's no pause and rewind, there's no internet. Right, back to Rolf's music career, if you can call it that. Another song was called I've Lost My Mummy, which is such a weird song, like, I don't know how to explain it. He's basically telling a story, fake crying on a so-called chorus, and then calling it a song. It's weird, it's horrible to listen to, and should never have been called music. Yet people, at the time, did seem to enjoy him. Altogether, Rolf Harris released 30 studio albums, two live albums, and 48 singles. Honestly, that's madness, and even amusing to me. How the hell did he manage that? You may recognise this next one in 1960, his single, Timey Kangaroo Downsport. 
reached number one in Australia and in 1969, Two Little Boys reached number one in both Irish and UK charts. Amazing. Just some of these song names raise my eyebrows. For example, Someone's Pinched My Winkles. <laughs> what? Then we have One Hand In My Pocket off the album. Can you tell what it is yet? Ooh, he is so creepy. I do remember you still love that saying. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> Can you tell what it is yet? Can you tell what it is yet? Another one was just called Big Dog. Obviously a song about a big dog. Staring at him and licking his chops. Actual lyrics from the song, by the way. His songs mainly feature around animals and children, which I think Rolf most related to. He knew he would get more attention and affection from animals and children, as they would not react the way adults may towards him. He craved love and attention. It's what he wanted most, along with fame. He needed to feel that people and the public loved him. He liked to travel back and forth to the UK, where his disgusting best bud lived, Jimmy. About there, that's good, yeah. that's good. Rolf, I know that the Australians aren't affected by hierarchy and things like that, but I did notice that you kissed Sir Jim's ring when he came in. <laughs> Is this an exception for you? I mean, we go back a long time. Uh, hey? What was it? Several weeks ago, wasn't okay. it, when we first Several met? Several weeks, yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> have a it. Lovely Okay, straight ahead. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm just going to back here and doing over their shoulder shot of me listening. May I present that to you, Sir James? My goodness gracious. Rolf wanted to make it big in the art world. He didn't care which country, Australia, the UK, wherever. He just needed everybody to love him. Rolf was famous for multiple shows, like Rolf Harris's Cartoon Time. Rolf on Saturday, okay. <laughs> Rolf's Amazing World of Animals. Rolf on Art, oh my god. I hate it when people constantly feel the need to use their full name on the TV names. Same with Gordon Ramsay, literally every show. Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. Ramsay's Hotel Hell. <laughs> now the one I actually do remember seeing and sometimes watching him in was a show called Animal Hospital which was actually filmed in Britain, so perhaps even more why I watched it. There was not many channels, he happened to be on one of them, which also happened to include animals, and I always loved animal shows, although I would also always end up upset seeing them hurt or in pain. But I never liked him. He was always so arrogant, I thought, even as a kid. And since looking into him for my project, I witnessed him many times cut people off, or even tell them off. All eyes had to be on him, and he always had to tell a story, and don't try and intervene either. This next clip is from a show called Five Minutes With, and then the person's name. This episode was Rolf, but remember, the guy only has five minutes to interview him, and trust me, he was patient throughout. Because Rolf didn't care about the clock. He was telling his stories no matter what, or how long it would take. It's all about Rolf. Yeah, fifth time this will be. I'm on the jazz stage. It's it's a wonderful thing. Scary as anything when you see the numbers of people. Were you going to go back to Australia? I just wanted to be a famous portrait painter. It didn't matter where, because my granddad was a portrait painter in Wales, and I thought that's what I'd do. All my life I used to say as a little kid, my mum told me that I would say to people, when they'd say, what are you going to be when you grow up? You know, Oh, and when did the singing come in? Well, let, let me finish the sorry, 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 sorry. I was, trying, <laughs> I was trying to keep the answer <laughs> short. So Rolf is Australian and was born on the 30th of March in 1930 in a suburb of Perth in Western Australia, a place called Bazendean, and grew up in Wembley. His parents, Agnes Margaret and Cromwell Harris, had actually both emigrated from the capital city of Wales, Cardiff where I was born. Rolf was apparently a very active and outdoorsy kid. He would say how when he came home from school, he would rip off all of his clothes and jump into the river behind his house. He was really into swimming and apparently a backstroke champion at 14. He was always a natural show off, which he knew and loved. He also liked to perform for the other kids, for that attention that he craved. When he got to university, he got a bachelor's in art. He then tried at teaching with a diploma of education from Claremont Teachers College. 
but thankfully, in my opinion, this was halted when he caught a meningitis type of illness. He was quite good at art, and when he was younger, at the age of 16, his self-portrait in oils was accepted to be hung in the art gallery of New South Wales out of 200 people. And when he was at home and well, he tried his chances at art again, and of course, being the confident showman he was, straight away he decided, I'm going to be an artist. He wanted to be a famous artist here in the UK, and to be fair, he actually did make a name for himself. Wolf had actually moved back to the UK in the 50s, around age 22. In television, but also throughout art, Rolf had picked up on the fact that a lot of children's art shows tended to be boring and slow, so he decided he would use his so-called art talent and make fast artwork whilst entertaining too. Of course, this was a long time ago, so there really wasn't much to choose to watch at the time, and children still needed entertaining. Rolf just exploited this and used it to his advantage. His first show was actually in 1953 at the BBC, of course, called Jigsaw, where he had a puppet called Fuzz. Oh, God, I hate puppets. Kids TV wasn't enough for Rolf, though. He really did need everybody to love him. He needed more and therefore also went into evening and more adult-friendly shows at the time. In between, he had returned to Australia when television had come about there around 1956, but I believe it was 1959 that he travelled there. Now this was a lot later than in other places, but I cannot imagine how long it would take to put together there. Australia is huge. It was when he was back in Australia and starring in children's variety shows that he would first sing the annoying yet very popular at the time, Tammy Kangaroo Down Sport. At the end of 1960, Rolf would tour Australia sponsored by Dulux Paints, taking his number one hit song with him all the way. He would use Dulux Paints on stage, and this is when his famous yet really creepy phrase emerged. Can you tell what it is yet? Can you tell what it is yet? Returning to the UK in 1962, he would meet a man called George Martin and recorded all of his songs the following year. He even met and worked with the Beatles after they had started recording with George Martin. Apparently, he had even changed the original lyrics to Timey Kangaroo Down to create a version for the Beatles specifically. He presented shows called Hi There and Hey Presto around 1964 to 1974 on BBC One and his profile on British television began to grow giving him many opportunities to be around large groups of children and young, vulnerable girls. In 1967, he presented Eurovision Song Contest. He was also a guest on one of the episodes of a famous classic British television show called This Is Your Life, which is a biographical television documentary which featured both celebrities and non-celebrities and would present them as the guest star of the show. And basically, with friends, family and other celebrities around, they would go through their entire life. It was very popular. It was first launched in 1955, or was that 53, can't tell, <laughs> to 1964, with one-off episodes in later years. He also performed the first concert in the concert hall of the Sydney Opera House. Now, enough about his crappy little sad lie for a minute. Let's flash forward and witness a horrific video that Rolf, and as we now know him to be, the disgraced child abuser, actually presented himself. And this was called Kids Can Say No. Oh my god, how awful is that to think of now? The entire video lasted 20 minutes and was a so-called child abuse prevention video. Just check this creepy shit out. He even had the parents singing along and managed to get the coppers involved. Grim. Isn't it good to be alive on a day like today? Good one, isn't it? Hey, yeah. Have a seat there. Breathe that air, you feel it all over your skin. It's good, isn't it? Sort of feeling you want to give somebody a big hug like that or one of those little pats makes you feel good. And it's that sort of touching I want to talk about today because it helps you to understand the sort of touching that doesn't make you feel too good. Natasha, who owns your body? It's my body. Absolutely. 
but sometimes people do things to one another which don't make them feel good. Sometimes a person can give you the no feeling without ever touching you at all. I'm sure we have lots more no feelings, but it is possible to learn to say no to people who are making you feel that way. You know, some people, especially grown-ups, they just don't listen. They don't pay any attention to you, they don't take any notice unless you actually come out and say, no, please stop. And, you know, sometimes you're not quite sure whether something is giving you a no feeling or not, but it's all right to ask people to stop anyway. Remember our song, my body's nobody's body but mine. You run your own body, let me run mine. Say no, you've got to learn to trust your own feelings. But you can also get a no feeling from people that you already do know. And it's, it's quite hard to say no to these people because you feel that you're always supposed to be nice to them. Or at least you feel that you should do what they ask you to do. Right, if it's hard to explain, you could always take your dolly and you could use that to point out to your mummy where you were actually touched, where you didn't want to be touched. You mustn't be ashamed to tell people that you were touched where you didn't want to be touched. You know, nothing gets better by keeping quiet about it. Tell them to go away and we'll get all our friends around us and we'll sing a song together. Okay, now how disturbing was that? Knowing what we know now, and if you don't know, no fear, we'll get into that. Of course, I didn't play the whole video, and I'm just hoping that this doesn't get taken down and gets accepted in the first place. <laughs> oh, he's awful. He's advocating for child abuse and not touching if you are not okay with it. Yet, in seconds of the video starting, he's talking about hugging and even touches two kids' faces. He is so disgusting. I highly doubt those kids wanted their faces touching them. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't care and he enjoys it. It's truly astounding actually how many of the defamed child abuse stars firstly would play the part of advocating against it or call out others when they themselves are guilty. I shall certainly make more of these videos if this one is well received, so please leave me a comment or a like so I know whether to do more and who to do next. At one point in that creepy ass 20 minute video, Rolf goes through a possible scenario with two girls, talking about how one girl went to visit a friend, but the friend wasn't home. The father invited her inside and got her a drink. Remember, this is the video advocating that kids can say no. Now this father, he accidentally, on purpose, spills the water on the girl and says, oh, we shall have to take it off. Now, that's bad enough, acting it out. But in this very child abuse prevention video, we actually witness the man beginning to undo her top, like a lot. You know, she's very young, she hasn't got to the point where she needs a bra yet, so she hasn't got anything on, on at all underneath. We see him undo the full top before she stops. Literally no need at all, especially considering what the video is advocating against. Did we need to act it out and show us all that? And I swear that is the very same girl he is talking with as well. That defo looks like the same girl to me. What do you guys think? The video seems to last forever, but let me just show you how it ends with the special song, I think I shall trim it down, with even PC plods getting in on it. Oh dear. And we'll get all our friends around us and we'll sing a song together. Thank you. 
okay, how disturbing is that? Especially now knowing he himself abused children for decades. Is he just me or is the whole video giving off like a Stepford Wives vibe? I know obviously the children are given the lines to remember and sing, but it's more the adults for me. The parents and the coppers just joining in, singing. Man, the entire video gives me the creeps. Plus, just some of the lines they sing, it's just all a bit too much for me. Wolf made a name for himself. He made celebrity friends like Scylla Black, who was apparently distraught when she heard the allegations made against him. Things were not so good at home for Rolf's family though. Rolf had come across a diary of his wife where she was said to have been contemplating suicide through the boredom of her life and never seeing Rolf. His daughter Bindi said he would give more attention to a strange kid in the street than he would to her. Now for me, huge red flag. Huge. Like why would he give a random kid in the street more attention than his own daughter? Hmm. Talking of Bindi, his daughter, it was actually her best friend at the time who was one of Rolf's victims. His youngest victim was seven or eight, a girl named Wendy Wilde, who had queued up to see Rolf at a community centre and he had the absolute nerve to stick his hand up her skirt in front of everyone. But of course, he did this out of view, under the table, taking full advantage of the girl and the situation and not giving a damn about the risk. What was he thinking? Oh yeah, my famous status will save me. Unfortunately, it seemed that a lot of these bad people came from the same era and between the late 60s through the 80s, and so many of them got away with it. The poor young girl Rolf assaulted said how it affected her entire life. It took away my childhood. It affected every aspect of my life from the second he assaulted me. That's what she said in court. Now Rolf's daughter Bindi's best friend first assault happened when she went on holiday to Australia with Bindi and her family. She was around 13, which is a huge thing, travelling across the world with someone else's parents. That's pretty scary in itself. But when that friend's father also turns out to be a creepy, perverted parent... Well, wow, this is just horrific. I feel so sorry for the poor girl. She must have felt so alone and afraid. She was actually terrified of Rolf and his celebrity status. He really did scare her and this gave him the opportunity to take advantage of her vulnerability, to which he would. Whether it would be at his own home or even the girl's home itself, he really didn't care. One horrific attack took place when the girl was 15 and Rolf was 50 and he actually chose to abuse her whilst his own daughter slept in the same bed beside her. Now that says a lot. Was he not bothered if Bindi were to suddenly wake up? Did he like the thought of perhaps being caught by her? Or was he doing the same thing to his daughter? Either way, that is horrific and so was he. He managed to abuse the same girl for the next 15 years or more, using his status as a backup. I mean, we've heard that before. No one will believe you. The same young girl ended up turning to drinking at a very young age to mask the pain of being abused by Rolf. And if she heard he may be coming around, she would drink in advance, expecting to be abused. And many times she would be so heartbreaking especially as this was her best friend's father and probably one of her idols before all of this over the years it is now known that rolf took advantage of multiple victims even celebrities yet he managed to stay completely under the radar actually making it on tv with different shows and the popular animal hospital later on in 2005, Rolf actually painted a portrait of the Queen. It looks more like a drag queen, to be fair. Nah, I mean, it's not that bad. But I don't think the Queen was also that impressed either. <laughs> he seemed to be liked by the Queen, though. Even starring in a concert celebrating the now late Queen Elizabeth II's jubilee outside Buckingham Palace in 2012. Rolf paid a tribute to the Queen, saying... What an absolute pleasure it is for me to be here. 
When Bindi's best friend saw this on TV, it angered her so much that she found the strength to come forward to police. In 2012, Operation Utri was put together by police to investigate the abuse allegations, mainly centred on the then already dead, disgraced Jimmy Savile, along with multiple others, encouraging victims to come forward and speak up, who had been silent for long enough. I mean, I'm sorry, but coming forward once the person is dead and gone will not help anybody for justice and for further victim prevention. Please, please, if you or anyone you know has been in similar situations with either a celebrity or a non-celebrity, encourage them to come forward. Or if it is yourself, in fact, please speak to somebody you know, somebody you trust, or your local police department. Actually, in May 2015, a report laid out the true, terrifying scale of child abuse throughout British society. Police revealed that over 1,400 men were under investigation linked to child abuse offences, and a shocking 261 of those were high-profile or celebrities, including politicians. That's like a quarter, isn't it? I don't know, I can't do maths. <laughs> Quick maths. <laughs> Now, with Operation Utree underway, I believe police would have already had their eyes on Rolf, especially considering he was such long-term good friends with the ultimate offender, Jimmy Savile, and had been seen with him on TV multiple times. All incredibly disturbing. Linaseed. Come here, Linaseed. Linaseed oil. What Linaseed. a good idea. Your chance. Safely leave her in my capable hands here. Surely, Rolf would have been top of the list to examine. One of the extremely awful things that Rolf would do, and this would and should have made most people think, what the fuck, was this sound in between is so-called singing and wibbling of the wobble board, which I can only describe as someone pleasuring themselves. <laughs> <laughs> then I came across one of the worst things my ears have ever had to suffer through and this was Rolf's frightening and unsettling version of a song called I Touched Myself. Mm. This song was by the Divinals. I'm pretty sure I know that from Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. <laughs> Yep, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> anyway, it's so horrific, I had to include it. So, if you wanted to skip through this, especially after you start to hear it, I totally understand. I shall put a timestamp on the screen for you, so you can just skip completely past it. For the rest of you who, like me, cannot say no to this sort of stuff, like, I just gotta hear it. Brace yourselves, because what you are about to hear is grim. Myself. Oh, I want you to find me. I forget myself. I want you to remind me. Ooh. I don't want anybody else. When I think about you, I touch myself. Ooh. I don't want anybody else. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm Running, oh sorry. You're the sun who makes me shine when you're around. I'm always laughing. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were touching yourself. I want to make you mine. I close my eyes. I see you before me. I think I'd die 
If you were to ignore me, a fool could see just how much I adore you. I get down on my knees, and while I'm down there, <laughs> I'd do anything for you. I, I don't want anybody else when I think about you. I touch myself. <laughs> I don't want anybody else. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh. And no one thought this guy was someone to watch your kids around? Madness. The ones of you who actually managed to persevere and listen to all of that, did you notice how he would laugh for a couple of seconds and then get straight back into it? Yeah, that's probably because people in the room looked visibly awkward, but not because he felt awkward, because he was straight back into it, giving those orgasmic parts way too much energy. I'm sorry to all of you for putting you through that. I feel your suffering. I myself feel violated after listening to that, so I'm not sure how you guys are feeling. He is so disturbing. How did not more people think this? Well, the sad thing is, they probably did. Rolf used to be known by multiple makeup artists as the octopus because he would literally have his hands all over the place, all over the girls and the production team. Actor Tony Porter, who actually later stood against Rolf in court, said he himself witnessed a situation in a dressing room with a young female makeup artist. As the young girl bent over or leaned over across him in order to do her job, Rolf decided to throw both of his hands out directly towards the girl's chest, to which she instinctively jumped back as you would. And then Rolf turned towards Tony Porter, giving him a creepy wink and literally licking his lips like Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, straight up pedo, my friend. And this disgusting human actually managed to span a 50-year career while abusing young girls a large portion of that time, staying under the radar while still being in full spotlight of the public. I can only imagine how these girls must have felt seeing him on their TV screens all of the time with hundreds of other children around him especially his daughter Bindi, his best friend, whose abuse by Rolf extended more than 15 years. The utter fear she must have felt. She said she just felt like a sexual object to Rolf, and he abused her to such a degree he made her feel worthless. Ugh, it's awful. After the scumbag Jimmy Savile's death on 29th of October 2011 and the forming of Operation Utri to hunt the British pedos down and with one of Rolf's victims, Tonya Lee, and Bindi's ex-best friend having the confidence to speak up and break the ice on the huge iceberg of creepiness that is Rolf Harris, or was, should I say. Finally, in May 2014, in a South London courthouse, Rolf Harris would be brought to trial. Now a much older, slower, frail version of his past self, with his wife on one arm and his daughter Bindi on the other, he took his sweet time and entered the court. Absolute madness his daughter is on his arm. I mean, perhaps she didn't believe her friend? What, and all these other people? I mean... Being your dad it is quite hard, I guess, but that's just ugh, seeing her holding his hand, I don't know. Either way, Rolf now faced 12 separate charges of indecent assault, but I'm sure there would have been many more not brought to light or to trial. 12 is enough. At least seven of these charges faced solely around Bindi's best friend and what she suffered through over 15 years or more, being left traumatised with long-term issues like constant panic attacks. Other charges included children as young as 7 or 8 up to the early teens. So, we can clearly see a pattern here. Rolf had a type, young, undeveloped girls up to teenage girls in vulnerable situations, and yet his entire career involved him being placed around thousands of potential victims, his exact type. 
These celebrities were literally being handed victims. It's just awful for how many got away with it, for how long it went on for, and the worst part, just how many people seemed to be aware that these people were not right to be around children and still allowed it to happen. Many people would later say how they knew about Dirty Ralph and many others like Jimmy Savile. Well, then why didn't you speak up? Nothing would have ever changed if everyone just sat back, kept quiet and watched these creeps night after night, surrounded by innocent children on national TV. Rolf even took advantage of fellow female celebrities, including Linda Nolan and Vanessa Faltz, who was a popular daytime TV presenter here in England, and Rolf was a guest on an episode of a programme called The Big Breakfast Show where celebrities would be interviewed. Now, it looks weird, and I found it weird myself, but they would often interview celebrities while sitting or lying on a bed. Strange, I know. Vanessa had even been warned to watch out as Rolf had wondering hands, but Vanessa thought he wouldn't be interested in her and wasn't worried. But even on live TV, with Rolf's wife standing two feet away, he still decided to run his hand along and up her leg to her underwear, even forcing her into a non-scripted TV break or advert, just to get away from him. And she even said she could have lost a job over that, as no one but the producer should be cut into an ad break. Disgustingly, his wife just seemed to watch on saw what was going on and didn't intervene or act like she had a problem with it. I don't know, how did he treat her? Now this is a prime example of how Rolf enjoyed to abuse his victims in literal plain sight. He definitely got off on that kind of risky situation and behaviour. Once again, Vanessa never made a big deal about it as it had not affected her the way it had affected his young innocent victims, so no concerns were raised at the time. Another celebrity female victim was Linda Nolan. Linda Nolan was a member of a girl group alongside her sisters called the Nolans and was actually at the time supporting Rolf when he was in South Africa but she was only an innocent 15 year old. Remember, things were very different back then. For example, one of Rolf's victims did not even know what a paedophile was even at 23 years old as that is how sheltered many lives were back then before the internet and social media. And again, she had remained mostly quiet for the best part of 40 years. Linda said that when this happened, she had nipped to the loo before going onto stage, just wearing her dressing gown. And when she came back outside, lo and behold, who was standing there waiting for her? Well, of course, it's the creepy Rolf. He proceeded to grab her in a bear hug, which apparently he did a lot to these young girls. And with his hands around her breasts, he began to kiss her and even lick the 15-year-old girl's neck. When she pushed him off and said, No, Rolf, what are you doing? He acted as if it was nothing and simply said, Oh, I'm only playing with you. <laughs> she said he made her feel embarrassed and like a stupid child, probably doing his old victim-blaming act. Therefore, she remained quiet and sad. She later felt completely violated when she heard of basically the same stories of Rolf's sickening behaviour. She believes she may have gotten off lucky by shouting at Rolf and making him stop, as he clearly wouldn't like that. Now, of course, in these types of cases, it's always one word against another. And with all the years that had passed, everyone was worried that Rolf would get away with it all. But this trial didn't begin with no evidence at all, of course. And one huge piece of evidence was a handwritten letter to Bindi's best friend's father from none other than Rolf Harris himself. Basically fully admitting his so-called affair, as he called it, with his daughter, but also how she was always a willing partner and he never meant to hurt or harm her and there was no rape. Hey, why are you apologising if you did nothing wrong, idiot? He even ended the letter to the father with this. Please forgive me, love Rolf. Love Rolf? What the fuck? How weird is that? First of all, to write to your victim's father is odd. 
but the way he spoke to him too, blaming his daughter for being targeted and basically groomed over years by him. That's called victim blaming, which also seems to be his thing. To then have the fucking balls to also say she was a willing partner in this 15 to 50 year old relationship, as he saw it apparently, is crazy and delusional. And lastly, you are really going to finish off the letter to your victim's father with Love, Rolf. Man, this guy was seriously sick. In that same crucial letter of evidence now, Rolf wrote this disgusting and demeaning line. I said, why did you never just say no? And that's obviously to his victim. And you said, how could I say no to the great television star Rolf Harris. Wow. He even wrote the great television star Rolf Harris in big capital letters. You know, just for extra effect with his horrifying constant victim blaming. His ego is ridiculous. I mean, first of all, the words, why did you never just say no? To even have the balls to write and ask that is just wild. And I'm not even sure how to comment, but I think you know how I feel. It is possible to learn to say no. You know, some people, especially grown-ups, they just don't listen. They don't pay any attention to you. They don't take any notice unless you actually come out and say no. Please stop. Remember our song. My body's nobody's body but mine. You run your own body. Let me run mine. Say no. And yet again, mentioning literally straight after how he probably saw himself as the great television star is just further showing how he believed that his fame would always save him and just how egotistical he really was. The extreme crucial evidence was shown to everyone in court and the so-called great television star's life crashed before his very eyes as this letter was clear evidence of his guilt. Now Rolf and his defence team chose the route of, no that didn't happen, and every single one of you is lying, claiming some big conspiracy against Rolf. Bit of victim blaming again? Hmm. So they chose to say that every single one of his victims was lying. That's fucking disgraceful. The trial lasted for weeks, where witness after witness and victims would speak in court and have to face evidence and bring all the suffering back. But after around four weeks came a victim who was at the time of the abuse around 14 years old. She was from Cambridge in the UK, Karen Gardner. And her story would certainly help paint that picture in jurors' minds of a lying, fake, disgusting child abuser who used his fame to target his perfect type with the ample opportunities he was given in life. This girl's abuse happened back in the 70s at an organised sports event for a show that was called Star Games. She claimed she remembered the encounter with the creep vividly. She described how she witnessed Rolf on his hands and knees, literally acting like a dog and even barking. Then he suddenly turned around and groped the innocent girl and assaulted her. When the young girl returned to her friends, they could visibly see something was wrong and her face was red. They asked her, to which she replied, You will never believe what Rolf Harris just did to me. Yet no one went to an adult in authority to report this. Such a shame. If you know something, see something, or even just hear something, please just do not ignore it. Speak to someone. In court, Rolf denied ever being to Cambridge. What an idiot. I mean, just think how many witnesses there were that day. Think how many had cameras and, well, if the great television star, Ralph Harris, was there, surely that moment someone would have captured. And that they did. Oh dear. Things are falling apart for Ralph because before they knew it, police were presented with the perfect photo to discredit Ralph's claim that he had never even visited Cambridge in the form of tiny green speedos and his curly mane. There he stood, plain as day, for all the court to see. What a planker. 
deny it now, Dickhead. Remember, most cameras or videos had a time and date stamp on them too. And more and more photos and videos started appearing, being handed in to police. It's not looking good, Ralphie boy. Now, Rolf's third victim to speak up was a girl called Susie Dent. And she, like most of the other victims and kids of her age, grew up watching Rolf on TV and admired him. She felt she would like to meet him and be around him. But that would soon change when she did. She was a makeup artist on set, working with Rolf. She said that day he just would not and could not keep his hands off her, in particular her legs. She said the abuse first started in a private makeup room, where he, without asking of course, would run his hands up her shorts. She said she was in utter shock. This man was older than her father, a supposed idol. What is he doing? Well, it was very different for females back then. Being spoken about like you're a piece of meat, even fondled with. People would see and yet stay silent. She was told to never upset the talent. It's mad how everyone was told to keep quiet back then by their bosses and even by producers at the BBC. She said in just a few hours, Rolf had touched it wherever he liked. Dozens of times. Like who the hell did this scumbag believe he was? Ugh. Susie even took to hiding in a broom cupboard just to get away from Rolf. Poor girl. Until he had completely left the building, so her bosses could not force her back to the makeup room with him. She later said, you could never pay me enough to work with Rolf ever again. Rolf's fourth victim in the trial left the court with yet another image of Rolf and his real personality. This was Tonya Lee, who spoke up about what happened to her when she was on a theatre tour of the UK with her theatre group and was assaulted by Rolf three times, where he managed to put his hands down both her top and her pants and even proceeded to perform a sexual act upon the young girl. She must have been absolutely terrified. Once again, he had targeted his type, as she was 14 years old at the time, in a public place, yet discreet, which also seemed to be what the freak was into. Just did his thing and left. Another innocent girl scarred for life. Have you noticed the pattern here? He likes the young, innocent girls in vulnerable situations. He likes to take advantage of that. He likes the, the thought of getting caught. He also loves to victim blame them and make them feel silly so they would never speak up. Never speak up against the great Rolf Harris. He liked to hide in plain sight. But she wouldn't let the disgraced star get away with it. And with the strength and courage to finally speak up, like many others, Tonya would travel across the world to the UK to stand up against the defamed star. When Rolf saw Tonya Lee in court and heard her statement, Rolf claimed he did not remember the girl. Probably denial, but just that comment makes you wonder. Just how many people did he abuse? He may not remember them, but my gosh... They remembered him. Just awful. These abusers always seem to have no idea about just how serious long-term effects after such experiences can last and just how many lives can be ruined by just one experience like that. So this part of the trial is crazy to me and always has been but because these offences took place years before the sentences were a lot lighter than if the offences had happened more recent. Like what the fuck? What difference does it make when the scum acted? He abused one of his victims for 15 years. This is just crazy. But that didn't matter apparently. By the end of June, Rolf Harris had been found guilty of all of the 12 indecent assaults. But what did he receive? For the multiple lives affected or even ruined. For the 15 year stint of constant abuse leading the girl to drink as a teen. Well, he received a ridiculous and if you ask me damn right insulting amount of time. Five whole years. Five years for all of the abuse he had inflicted. Disgusting. Shameful. Rolf never showed an inch of remorse. He never apologised to his victims in court. Do you know why? Because this creature never believed anything he did was wrong. 
He was the great Rolf Harris. Everybody loved him. Girls loved him. Kids loved him. His ego was so big, only he mattered to him. Rolf Harris was indeed a narcissist, as he clearly had an unreasonably high sense of his own importance, and certainly needed to seek attention, as he admitted from a young age, and he most definitely needed people to admire him. After the disgraceful punishment that Rolf was given, the victims we knew of and many others who had not come forward with at the trial were completely outraged and angered by the menial sentence for such horrific crimes. They probably hoped they would never have to share their stories, with Rolf being older and such serious charges, but five years is a complete disgrace and an insult to all his victims. This prompted more and more victims to come forward, demanding justice and sharing their stories of abuse. It was clear that Rolf had no care of his victims or any of the pain and suffering he had caused them over the years, as a letter, apparently sent by Rolf, when in prison, described these very victims as money-grabbing wenches. That is awful, and still victim-blaming. Horrifically, Rolf only served a tiny three years of his five-year sentence and was then released from prison. This may be because in November 2017, Rolf's conviction that he had assaulted the seven to eight-year-old Wendy Wilde at the community centre back in 1969 was overturned on the grounds that it was unsafe. Unsafe? Unsafe? Unsafe would have been letting this freak anywhere near children in the first place, let alone the ample opportunities he was literally handed over the decades. That is what was unsafe. Bunch of dickheads. Sorry, I'm getting words up. I just feel awful for all of his victims, knowing he served a ridiculous and humiliating three years for everything. In October 2022, it was reported that Rolf was diagnosed with neck cancer. He was unable to talk and had to be fed with a feeding tube, requiring 24-hour care assistance. Calm as a bitch, eh, Rolf? Rolf Harris died at his home in Bray, Berkshire, United Kingdom, on the 10th of May 2023, aged 93, living a much longer life than he ever deserved, if you ask me. This opportunistic, narcissistic child molester managed a whole career in the public eye whilst committing offence after offence and getting away with it. And yet so many people knew he was a wrong un. All that ever mattered in life to Rolf was that everybody loved and adored him. And we're not talking about his wife or his daughter. No, he wanted the public, the world to love and admire the great Rolf Harris. And for a long time, by many, he was. And he managed his life and goals and dreams to become a TV star who so many knew. But thanks to Operation Nutri and the brave victims, that all came crashing down before his very eyes. Being branded a pedo and a pervert and getting yelled at by the public, this was Rolf's worst nightmare. You Yes, he served a fucking sickening three years for all of his crimes, but I guarantee he suffered inside forever, knowing everyone now hated him, despised the kiddie fiddly, and knew the dirty truth. He would be forever only remembered that way. That was Rolf's ultimate punishment. He was once asked what was his greatest fear. You know what his answer was? Not being loved. And again, we are not talking about his family here. And his complete rage and the wrath he felt for the brave victims who spoke up shone through brightly, with his words describing them as money-grabbing wenches. Oh yeah, he was furious they spoke out. Probably astounded he was ever caught in the first place. And I hope his victims can find solace in the fact that the one and only thing that ever mattered to Rolf was that everybody loved him and he died being hated 
by the world. If you enjoyed this episode of the Defamed Stars and would like to see more, please like the video, subscribe for more videos and drop me a comment. What do you think of this whole case? And who would you like to see me feature in the next Defamed Stars? Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it. I know this was a long one, so if you've made it to the end, you are all legends. <laughs> Random jump.